All right, everybody, here we go with game number one between Rain Kiwikagi and it's Gosu Huangsen. It's going to be an epic PvP match, and starting map is going to be on Zell Mountain Caverns. We have, of course, for you today, my good old co-caster Orb, a.k.a. Jake Slurru. Orb, how you doing, man? Oh, it's so good, man. It's a beautiful day outside for some StarCraft. You know what I'm talking about? I have no Stay clue indoors. what you're talking about because I don't <laughs> go outside. I'm a StarCraft player. So if by outside you mean inside in the dark, then I absolutely agree with you. That's that's exactly what I meant, Andre. <laughs> uh, I actually have all my blinds drawn right now, so I actually honestly have no idea what it looks like outside. All I care about is this amazing StarCraft game. Well, you should, and it, let's go ahead and introduce the players. In the bottom left-hand corner, we have as the Red Protoss, Gosu Huangsen, aka just Huangsen. In the top right-hand corner, we have as the Yellow Prot Protoss, Rain Kiwi Kaki. Now, me and you are both Protoss players, and yes, I'm going to include myself in the Protoss player group now. Uh, why don't you go ahead and explain to me exactly what's going on with, you know, Protoss versus Protoss on Zell Maui Cavern? Well, I mean, it's a pretty old map, so uh, we've seen a lot of stuff on it. So you see these really subtle changes to players play uh, based on the number of games they've already seen. For example, Kiwi Kaki's very, very careful pylon placement there to the left of his Nexus uh, is just to watch for any cannon rushes being set up on the left side of his base. He also is checking for any common proxy spots with that probe. So uh, you can see that uh, Huangsen doing the same thing with that probe. You have to be very careful on a two player map if your opponent goes through some type of proxy. Um, but with uh, the natural being pretty wide open on this map, generally PvP just ends up being uh, quite a bit of uh, one base versus one base. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Blink Stalker usage and uh, both these players staying on one base until they feel very secure in taking an expansion. Definitely, and apparently there's a little bit of lag issues, but I'm sure that will be cleared up momentarily. Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, I mean, We've seen so many different problems with um, with just all-in cheeses, really, on this map. There's just so many games historically that I can think of that it's just like, holy crap. Um, you know, one zealot or, or two zealots or whatever can end the game so easily. Want to be cool, I always... Uh, <laughs> that guy from the MLGs, I always see him doing stuff that are really, really tricky. Cannon rushes and you know, double assimilator steal, so many things like that. Uh, I really feel like Zelnaga kind of curtails itself to that type of play if the players want to go that route. But nevertheless, we don't see anything out of the standard, out of the normal. Um, we're just seeing standard play, both of them taking their gateways and putting up assimilators. Nothing like the Huff build, I would say, the Korean style protesters protos. Yeah, the, interestingly, it does look like Kiwi Kaki went for the 13 gate, while Huangsen did go for the 12 gate, so we can have that warp gate tech done just a little bit earlier in case he wants to be aggressive. Um, he does have a second gas on the way, though, so it doesn't look like either player going to be going for any type of 4 gate here. Double gas on the way for Kiwi Kaki as well. Now, on a map like Zanaga Caverns, uh, mobility is very important, so Blink Stalkers often ends up being the most common choice. Um, but a lot of players still like to just play defensively with that Robo style and just try to take an expansion and defend those choke points. Yeah, definitely. And I would love to see actually both these players going for the Blink Stalker route, to be honest, just because I think uh, Colossus aren't as strong on this map just because there's a lot of open areas where you as the Blink Stalker or the Gateway unit army can really start engaging you don't have to uh to, to really be placed in like a, a bad situation so that being said i would love both these players to be going blink stalkers and just macroing up i want to see macro pvp man that's that's my favorite thing to watch yeah i gotta agree with you there and it does look like it could still be a blink stalker potentially we've only seen stalker production both players generally if you were going to go for something else like a robot play you would try to get yourself out a century or two early on uh you know so you'd have that forward defense but with both players just completely pumping out as many stalkers as possible right now it definitely looks like we're just gonna be seeing uh blink stalker versus no <laughs> never mind alongson adding on the robo after two gateways uh, and uh, Kiwi Kaki adding the third gate, so probably gonna be seeing that Twilight Council going down from Kiwi Kaki pretty soon here. But uh, Huangsen will be taking that defensive robo path. Definitely, I think Huangsen actually got in here with this one probe, which is a huge, huge thing scouting wise. And he saw, oh my gosh, you have two, 
two gateways and uh, two assimilators, I think you might be going something like Dark Templars. That's probably what he was thinking at that time because he's like, well, I don't see any units at all. Just your first stalkers out here. It might be some sort of Dark Templars. Let me go ahead and get my robotics facility done. And that's why I think it was actually a reaction more than anything. We'll see exactly how uh, both these players go about it because you do see a Robotech coming out from Kiwitaki. And he's just playing the same way Honks and is just a little bit uh, a little bit behind. Well, it, interestingly, the robotics bay is going down from Longston, but actually the difference is that he never actually threw down the third gateway. It actually has a probe there, maybe about to throw that down. Um, but it is going to be 2 gate robo versus 3 gate robo and I'm actually just so perplexed, Andre, because, uh, you know, both players going for this robo build, and as we've said, Blinks, Blink Stalkers are so popular on this map. Kiwi Kaki with a very, very large number of Stalkers, but not going to have Blink available to them. Now, do you think it would be better for these players just to get some Immortals out and use that progression? Do you think it would actually be better to go along into that Colossus tech path and just try to build up a death ball. You know, it's hard to say in this position because you know, all both of them are, are trying to get reads. I'm pretty sure both of them uh, believe that each other are in the dark. So I think right now getting the immortal would be standard. It's a more safer route just because, again, there's a lot of of anonymity with both of these players um, for their respective builds. Um, I wouldn't. I, I don't know. It, it's tough. I think. Whoever doesn't make the Immortal, which is right now Huangsin, uh, is at an advantage because, of course, if you get Colossus count up higher and higher and higher, it's much better, especially if both of you are Colossus. So, currently, I would say Huangsin is in the lead in that respect, but oh my goodness, we're having a tech switch over here. Twilight Council going down for Huangsin, so he looks like he's going to go Blinkstalkers, and I think that's just because he believes. No, I, I don't know why. Actually, both of them are going Blinkstalkers, excuse me. Uh, it's, it's a little bit interesting, but I can only imagine it's because on this map specifically, well, and on other maps as well, when you run into a uh, Robo versus Blink Stalker play and you have Colossi, the biggest problem is that anytime you try to move out towards your opponent's base, you're going to uh, risk getting counterattacked by those Blink Stalkers with their added mobility. Uh, so if you have Blink Stalkers of your own, you can kind of counteract that by being able to blink back to your base, defend in that regard. Um, so I can only imagine that would be the reason he wants to do that. He doesn't want to fall behind on tech and risk, uh, you know, not having Blink Stalkers versus Kiwi Cocky's Blink Stalkers. Uh, but with neither player actually going for any type of early expansion here, both players have actually gone up to four gate plus Robo plus Twilight Council getting blinked. So uh, both players realize how wide open this natural is, and uh, they're just going to be staying on one base. You might even just see it stay one base here until both players are essentially uh, mined out. Yeah, that, that will be uh, quite, quite epic, and I think it's leaning towards that route. Although, Blink Stalkers against defensive Blink Stalkers, it can work out pretty nicely for uh, the defensive person just because you can choose to blink on your opponent, whereas your opponents obviously cannot choose to blink on you. They have to play a more defensive route. So we'll see how both these players will be playing this out. It's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of sketchy just because that Colossus. And I think there might be a timing for Huangsen to really push out and a lot of times, Blink Stalker, getting that Blink Stalker up, um, you rely on that just to run away. But Huangsen has that ability to chase. And, you know, just as I say, this Kiwikaki, he's being a sneaky sneakster, taking the right hand side of the game. Yeah, crazy move, but it's definitely a good idea. The Observer from uh, Huangsen is now going back, but was actually checking out his natural, so would have been scouted if he had gone for the expansion there. So going for this ninja expansion while he's trying to contain his opponent is a great move. Huangsen is trying to move down the ramp, but unfortunately both players are forced essentially to just continue to blink back and forth. This Colossus, oh no, oh. My, it's getting sniped! Great move by Kiwikaki, but there's the blink forward from Huangsen. He's trying to use this moment when Kiwikaki's out of position to engage, but he really needs to focus fire that Immortal Great Torp. Yeah, and there goes down right now. It looks like Guardian Shield is up. Blink Stalker Micro going very, very well for Kiwikaki. And it looks like Huangsen is going to have to back up. Two Stalkers weren't able to make it up. And there it gets picked off. Nice blink up by Kiwikaki. And it looks like Kiwikaki definitely took the better end of that stick. There we go. Another blink up, taking out another Stalker. Very, very nice play. And Kiwikaki is definitely in a commanding lead, having that low ground, being able to outposition his opponent. And on top of that, having that expansion coming up pretty soon. We do have Harvester counts just about even, but Kiwikaki will have that extra chrono boost, actually double the chrono boost of his opponent. 
Wow, look at this though. War Prism on the way from Huang Sin. Definitely a great idea to try to get back into this game. In this situation, uh, you can't really afford to just try to go down your ramp and engage. I mean, especially when he has the smaller army. So uh, utilizing that War Prism is going to be a great idea to try to get into the main of Kiwi Kaki while he's leaving all of his units here to defend. So could uh, do some nice harassment. Now, the problem is that that Colossus represented defense for Huang Sin. It allowed him to just prevent Kiwi Kaki from being aggressive on that ramp because of the choke point. Um, and he also spent a lot of uh, money on it. He spent money on the Robotics yep. Bay and on the Colossus itself. Uh, so the fact that he lost that and has not rebuilt another Colossus, uh, I mean, he's just that much farther behind in this game. Yeah, definitely. Huang Sin definitely needs to make something with this one Warp Prism. I assume that he's going to be warping in. Well, it could be probably uh, Stalkers, excuse me. I thought it was going to be probably Zealots, but it could be Stalkers most definitely. We'll see in a little bit. That Meanwhile, that expansion is yielding a lot of minerals over here on the right-hand side. It looks like he's just about 50% uh, higher in income, so Kiwakaki is definitely going to be feeling it pretty soon. And he's, you know, just extending his lead more and more as time goes on. Here come the Zealots, man, into Kiwi Kaki's main. He actually had the War Prism, uh, assuming the, that uh, Kiwi Kaki would have an expansion by now. There's Kiwi Kaki's first warp in. He does have some Zealots on the way to try to defend against this. And he's actually sending his entire army back home right now to try to defend against uh, this War Prism, where he knows there might be a forward pylon around somewhere. So he's warping in these Zealots. Shouldn't take too much damage in the line, assuming he can continue warping in Zealots, although it's actually 3-1 to one right now. So he might be in some trouble, but there's the expansion on the way from Longston. He's using this opportunity uh, where he all of a sudden now has that map control to go ahead and get back into this game with that very important expansion the harvester count is 31 and 35 though uh, with two bases for kiwi kaki so kiwi kaki is still way ahead in this game yep and it's up to kiwi kaki now where does he go from here i mean he has a lot of different options right now it looks like he's going for the mass gateway option um, we don't see a third and fourth assimilator going down for his his uh, natural or whatever you want to call it his expansion oh wait Wait one second. Huang Sin is going to come up here with his oh. probe and see the expansion all the way on the right-hand side. And he's not going to be happy to see that. He's like, oh, my God, this is a fully saturated base. What the heck? Where did this start from? And now the first things are down. But the big thing I wanted to say before was the third and fourth assimilator. That is normally indicative of, you know, some sort of Archon play. You can get those High Templars out very, very fast. We don't see that coming after Kiwi Kaki. We don't even see Charge yet. He's just stuck on the Mass Stalkers, which, you know, I kind of like because Kiwi Kaki, I don't know if you've seen his Blink Stalker Micro in PvZ. It's ridiculous, man. And relying on his, uh, his Blink Stalkers is not a bad idea. Well, he's coming for the engagement. Unfortunately, the Zealots are actually stuck in back from Kibikaki. He definitely needs to get those in front. There we go. Blink some Stalkers back. Really good Blink Micro on both sides right now. It's 29 to 27. Looks like Kibikaki barely has the advantage. Uh, but it's getting more and more, just a couple units, a couple little extra blinks there uh, are giving my huge advantage to this engagement. And Wongson desperately needs to fall back. I don't know why he's engaging right now. Great door. Oh and my he's, God. oh no, and there's the GG. Perhaps if he had fallen back to his natural using those true points, he might have been all right, but out in the open. And that means that Dewey Coxman will take game one. And wow, Orb, holy crap. If you look back on that entire stalker battle, you would see Kiwi Kaki's, all of Ki Kiwi Kaki's stalkers in the yellow and in the red. That's what I'm talking about. His PVZ micro, uh, when he's doing Blink Stalker against like Roach Zergling, is amazing. Nevertheless, it's also amazing with uh, stalker versus stalker battles. He performed that so, so amazingly. Yeah, there's a couple things I wanted to talk about there. First off, I think it was really smart of, of Kiwi Kaki. Instead of adding on extra gas, going to Archons, Colossus, anything of that sort, mm -hmm. just staying on Blink Stalker was very smart because specifically he had that extra expansion way down the bottom right. So the only way he was going to be able to defend that is, and defend his main is if he had a very, very mobile army. So Blink Stalker's going to help out a lot with that. On the flip side, it would have been great to see a different tech choice from Huang Sin. After he took his expansion, you know, you can, you can kind of, even though it's really wide open, you can defend those choke points at Zelnaga uh, Caverns, the natural. Um, but I mean, if you just kind of attack out in the open while you're playing Stalkers the way he did, or you know, just go for that strategy as opposed to maybe using Colossi to defend yeah. choke points when he already had the tech, it's not going to work out as well for you, man. You know, it was really interesting that Huangsen chose to get that one Colossus and then switch over to Blink Stalkers. Now, that could be a mind game, but in terms of efficiency sake, 
Uh, obviously, we can all see that's extremely inefficient. But what I think Huang Xin was thinking in his head was, hey, I'm going to force some sort of Colossus tech uh, or excuse me, I'm going to show Colossus tech and then it forces a specific composition and then I'm going to catch him off guard with Blink Stalkers because he's not going to be as mobile. There are, there are a number of things that could be going through Kiwikaki's head. Uh, nevertheless, Huang Sin really wasn't able to make anything of it. Kiwikaki stayed way too strong and was able to just take it home for the win. So we're going to uh, be going... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, just one minor thing. He had really, really good control that game. Like, r it wasn't just the Blink Stalker micro. He actually picked off, like, two of Huang Sin's observers there. Yeah. Uh, that we were, like, talking about stuff while it was happening. But, uh, it, I mean, it was just really good. Even while Huang Sin had his own Stalkers and, and his observer, it was just that uh, Kiwikaki had the better control, man. Definitely. So we're going to be going into game number two between Hunk Huang Sin and Kiwikaki. Join us. We'll be back after this break. <laughs> 